carbs versus net carbs. You know, the funny thing is about it, when people ask me how do you count them, I find it so odd. I've been doing this so long, I just think it's so mainstream, everybody knows already. But there's actually pretty a small percentage of people that actually know about this. So how to count carbs versus net carbs? Let's find that out. First, I am Darius, this is Sugarless Crystals, just sugar-free destination of YouTube, and we're counting today. We're doing a little math, a little math here and there, you know, a little two plus two equals four, or rather four minus two equals two. This actually got brought to my attention by my friend Cheryl because she doesn't do keto at all. So she was like, Darius, what exactly is net carbs or carbs? I don't, I don't get it. You know, I was doing a recipe and she said, I did it and I was thinking about keto and I said, well, well, what the heck? I didn't add any sugar in it and I had like 17 carbs. Like it didn't make any sense to me. But see, the funny thing about it was, like, it was like a, it was like a burger wrap, like a lettuce wrap or something like that she had created. Anyway, while I'm rambling, to get to the point, carbs versus net carbs and how to count them, or how to count carbs versus net carbs, excuse me. For those that don't know, the reason we net carb is because certain things aren't processed by the body. No, certain things aren't processed by the body. So therefore, what passes through isn't used by glucose. So then you get the term net carbs of what's actually being used or counting against you in, your proce in, in the process of getting into, into ketosis or the process of actually kicking you out of it. If you were adding sugar into your diet or necessarily, you know, if you just had something like a sweet potato. Sweet, potato, sweet potatoes tend to have a lot of fiber, but they also have a lot of sugars in them. So therefore, when you take the fiber out and you have the sugars, you get the net carb of what's gonna affect your body at the worst, or what's not going to pass through your body, what's actually going to be used within your body. Now, some of these labels out there are very, very confusing, and I understand why, trust me, trust me, I get it. I mean, just not too long ago, No Better Foods, when they first came out, before, you know, the whole chocolate chip scandal. <laughs> All right, anyway. Before the whole chocolate chip scandal, you know, when they first came out, I looked at the label and I was like, well, why in the world, how are they marketing it to people who are on low carb or keto and the carbs are so high? But what they were doing, they weren't, they didn't minus out the fact of, of allulose. See, allulose is a sugar alcohol and it isn't used up by the body, but they were adding it in there. And so the carb count was like super high. So when I first looked at it, I was like, well, what in the world? So then when I figured it out, I said, well, this isn't very good for marketing because for someone who doesn't know this, they're gonna think that these cookies or your products are too high in carbohydrates. Well, your products are too high in carbohydrates. Now, let's talk about sugar alcohols really fast. Not too much into it, but you know, sugar, al sugar alcohols aren't processed by the body. What typically happens is, um, Correct me if I'm wrong, it's been a while since I read up on this. They don't get, I think they are absorbed into the bloodstream or either they just pass through, something of that nature. This is terrible information, but <laughs> I do apologize. But when I get my blog going, when I actually write this post down, I'm going to make sure it's correct. Now, all sugar alcohols aren't created equal, such as dextrin and maltodextrin which are just as harmful as sugar, if not worse. But the, technically, they're still a sugar alcohol. Now, things like erythritol, matter of fact, hold on one second. Now, I have two different sugar alcohols that I go to use. One is monk fruit and one is erythritol. Now, the monk fruit is, is highly concentrated, so it does have erythritol in here. Now, looking at both of these labels, one says four grams of carbohydrates for four grams of sugar alcohols, and the other has four grams of carbohydrates, but zero, oh well, they didn't even list the sugar alcohols at all. So for somebody that doesn't know exactly what they're looking at, if they look at this, this can be a bit confusing. Because now you're looking at it and you're like, well, where are the four coming from? But if I had to take a guess, even though it has four grams of carbohydrates, they're sugar alcohols, so they don't count. Now we have this honor syrup here by Chalk Zero. Now on the back, it has 13 grams of carbohydrates, but 11 grams of dietary fiber. So that's two grams missing. That's two grams of sugar or two grams of carbohydrates missing in this. So aren't you confused? Like it, it makes it, like, it, it doesn't make any sense. So to be safe, to me, the best way that I do things, a great rule of thumb to have, 
unless they list the sugar alcohols or there's a known sugar alcohol in it. For instance, this has monk fruit. That's what Choc Zero uses to sweeten their ingredients. Well, most of them, they use monk fruit. Monk fruit is kind of a hot thing. And personally, I'm starting to lean towards monk fruit myself, but I'm rambling. So a rule of thumb that I use, unless, there's, unless I have a known sugar alcohol in it, and unless anything that's fiber, I subtract. If it says sugar alcohol, I subtract. Other than that, I do a net carb count. That's how I do mine, and I found out that it truly, truly works for me. Now, a quick tip, most companies are always gonna put that fiber down. For, for what reason, I don't know. I don't know if it's a trend or not, but they rarely put that sugar alcohols. Some will, some won't. Just like that um, erythritol that you saw. They didn't list the sugar alcohols on one, but they listed it on the other. I guess they assume, well, since you're buying erythritol, you should know already. But that's not always the case. Uh, just off the top of my head, some of your sugar alcohols that you may need to look for in the ingredient list, stevia, erythritol, monk fruit, allulose, aspartame, dextrin, maltodextrin, am I missing one? I can't think anymore. Now when it comes to fiber, you got you got a couple different types of fiber also, but no fiber is absorbed. As I said for that Chalk Zero thing, it was made, it was made with, this was made with vegetable fiber. Then you have vegetables that have actual fiber in it. The list goes on and on. These pecans have three grams of dietary fiber and one gram of total sugars but four, four grams of total carbohydrate. So you kind of see how that works. So four minus three, you have one sugar. But let's say for instance, it said five grams. So you would take three away and you would just have two grams of sugars because there's nothing in here besides pecans. It may not list all the, all the carbohydrates, but unless there's something well known, take it out. If you find this video informative, give it a thumbs up. And if this is your first time here, hit that subscribe button. I am Darius, this is Sugarless Christmas, your sugar-free destination of YouTube, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, real fast. I am sorry for my hair. Jesus. You know, I, I went the whole weekend without doing my hair. I've been wearing caps all weekend. But the thing was, I had to go to the gym tonight. And before I record this video, when I got back, like, I'm not gonna have time to do my hair, record the video, and edit it. So, I had to come to you guys as is. This is just a dedication that I have. Just, ugh. I mean, technically the style is always supposed to look like that, but you know, I'm rambling, I'm rambling.